gaze upon this face. Taken by itself, it's fabulously uninteresting. A cube with a few basic extrusions for ears and two rectangles for eyes. But now, start adding some statistics. Pants color, camo, 12.74%. Hairstyle, bald, 6.79%. Pants, cargo pants, 11.11%. Shoes, slide, 7.01%. Shirt color, camo, 2.64%. But none of that really matters. Because the reason this simple cube is fascinating is because in a world of humans, pigs, skeletons, and elephants, this cube is extraterrestrial. It is a visitor. Only 0.08% of the members of this particular clan to which he belongs share that particular trait, which means he is rare, very rare, and valuable, very valuable. So valuable, in fact, that within 24 hours of him arriving on Earth, he was bought for 420 ETH, or around $1.47 million. But our visitor isn't the rarest item in the clan. No, no, no. There are even rarer ones, and they will fetch even higher prices. Welcome to the world of MeBits, the latest breathtaking value driver from those bright minds behind CryptoPunk's Lava Labs. So come ape with me as we squawker to find nine to curved surfaces. This is The Defiant. Ask yourself a question. How many times this year have you found yourself shaking your head in bafflement, bleating, it's fucking crazy, man, to anyone who would listen? Thing is, there is only so much insanity one human can take before this happens. If you think Dogecoin hitting 60 cents today is crazy, wait till you hear this. Many analysts, including myself, believe that Doge has the potential to be equal with Ethereum. And for those of you that think it sounds crazy because of Doge's market cap, wait till you hear this. Both Doge and Ethereum have essentially the same endless market cap. And if you keep digging, all aspects of both coins are virtually the same. I used to say I'd give it a year to hit the price of Ethereum. But with the way Doge is going right now, we could see this in less than a few months. Thankfully, arriving to the party armed with a literally bottomless hamper of moist towelettes cut from only the sanest cloth, our sponsors. And first, to wrap us in their deft embrace, our Balancer, who are up to some pretty funky stuff to help ease the pain of high gas costs on Ethereum. Trade as much as you like and recoup most of the gas costs, damn straight you can. And in their Bal for Gas campaign, traders are receiving six figures worth of Bal tokens every week. And with version two just around the corner, Balancer is fast becoming a one-stop shop for DeFi liquidity. Version two is gonna be bringing stable pools and weighted pools tightly integrated under a single protocol with flash loans, lending via asset managers, and much more. Check it out at balancer.finance. Now, Arva, fun fact, the name Arva is taken from the Finnish word for? Ghost. Ghost is right. It's a decentralized, open source, and non-custodial liquidity protocol on Ethereum. Depositors earn interest by providing liquidity to lending pools while borrowers can obtain loans by tapping into these pools with variable and stable interest rate options. Deposit in Arbor Protocol and receive A tokens, which accrue interest every second right in your wallet. Seriously, brav, you can watch your balance go up every second. Swap any of your deposited assets at any time to get the best yields on the market. For the developers out there, Arbor features access to DeFi building blocks like flash loans and credit delegation. Arbor Protocol liquidity pools are now available on Ethereum. Oh yeah, and the sidechain Polygon. Do you remember your first DeFi transaction? I know I do. It was something else. After juggling five plus tabs on your browser, you probably gazed at that Etherscan confirmation feeling like you just contributed to the future of finance. Except you probably got quickly lost in a world of gas prices, vaults, pools, hard forks, DJNs, and sushi chefs. Fortunately though, Zerion has built the dream tool for managing your portfolio. Track all of your token balances across wallets and chains, access every kind of DeFi asset, including indexes, pools, and yield strategies, and trade at the cheapest rates with no extra fees. That's because Zerion sources liquidity from every decentralized exchange like Uniswap, 0x, and 1inch. There's no sign up required, there's no fees, and a blissfully easy UI. It really is very easy. Simply connect your wallet at app.zerion.io. Now, let's get back to the me bits. 
I bet you're wondering, what the hell is a me bit? Well, I will tell you. It's a collection of 20,000 3D characters, each unique, but assembled from a randomly generated collection of attributes of varying degrees of scarcity and hence desirability. Sounds exactly like CryptoPunks, yeah? Well, that is the idea. That model has been the undeniable party beast of the NFT world, copied over and over and over, most recently by Hashmasks, Advertars, and Bored Ape Yacht Club. Now, where the punks were ultra-simple pixel art, the Mebits step boldly into the future by embracing the Z-axis, or if you're English like me, the Z-axis, flinging themselves with gay abandon into three dimensions. Well, let's not get carried away here. Simplicity is still the special source. The characters are built from voxels. What is a voxel? Well, we cut straight to the undeniable poster child of the NFT generation. I am, of course, talking about Mike Winkleman Beeple himself. Mike Winkleman, Mike Winkleman. Yes. Oh, hey guys, Mike f***ing Winkleman here. You might f***ing know me as that rich f who got $69 billion at Christie's. It's like a f voxel, you know? It represents a single goddamn sample of f***ing data point on a regularly sh** three-dimensional grid. You dig? Basically, it's a fucking pixel, you fucks, in three to fucking dimensions, you God, I hear having to explain 3D shit to all you cunts out there. I wish I'd never fucking done that fucking sale. Get off my back, get off my Instagram. Spoiler, that wasn't really my Winkleman. Not really. But the mouth on that guy. Am I right? So voxel art has become a much-loved style, thanks in no small part to the incredible success of games like Minecraft. And with CryptoPunks, you've got a fun, albeit tiny little image, and that was kind of it. I mean, obviously there was also the possibility of selling your punk for mad cheds, bruv, but Lava Labs are promising a whole other bunch of stuff that you can brag about on Twitter here, although they haven't been able to deliver any of it yet. Owners of MeBits will get an additional asset pack that includes the full 3D model, which you can then use to render and animate your MeBit or use as your avatar in the metaverse. And that really gets to the heart of it because, as they wrote in the launch blog post, CryptoPunks were the ideal 2D avatar for Discord, Twitter, and other social media, but they hope that the MeBits will be the 3D avatar for virtual worlds, games, and VR. Now, we are bullish about the metaverse future, and we are looking forward to seeing how the MeBits are used in such environments. Now, we'll come back to that idea in a bit, but let's first look at the initial distribution of the MeBits. So here's how it went down. There were 20,000 MeBits up for grabs. If anyone owned a CryptoPunk or a Glyph, which was Lava Lab's second big NFT project, they could claim a MeBit via the community grant. Now, given that the public sale was a Dutch auction, which started at 2.5 ETH, that meant the lucky NFT holders were airdropped an asset worth a cool eight and a half grand. Now, Dutch auction means declining price. It starts at the top and slowly works its way down. And you wait as long as you dare, then you buy, and the price keeps descending to zero or until the supply is exhausted. And in this case, the price made it as low as 2.42 ETH before the whole damn lot was gone. There was a lot of aping, and I'm not proud to admit, I was one of those apes. I only went to get wild, didn't I? Of course I did. Oh, you ain't got no effing. Pardon my frog crew. What you're gonna get here, you skivvy? And you could get something deep. Or maybe you get my cock. That's the buzz in it. And then you get twitted up and ape dens, be like, man's got a freaking alien, bro. And before you got and given, you bang in the buy button like a baboon. Ape them grinding your grill like, watch you get, watch you get, watch you get, watch you get. Then money go, I buy. It cry. So the luckless Ruben wasn't the only one aping in. Some big names also started putting some seriously big money into MeBits, like this chap. And he made very, very good on his promise, picking up a scarcely believable haul of 205 MeBits, all streamed live on Twitch. Top quality entertainment. But despite spending well over seven figures, it still wasn't enough to net him one of the highly prized alien visitors. And of course, this is what kept me coming back to the slot machine. The gossamer, shape-shifting mind miasma that maybe the next mint would be the mint. It had to be the mint that would get something good, but it wasn't. So let's take a look at what I actually did get. 
So, here it is. This is what I got. This Motley collection of Mi Bits is mine. I own them. I have seven in total, and I have to be honest, I don't love any of them. None of them really kind of got me. Went, yeah, yeah, because I, I saw people on Twitter going, oh, I love my Mi Bit. I didn't get that response to any of them. So I'm kind of slightly disappointed, I guess. So how do you really go about evaluating or judging the, the worth of these things? Well, if you click on them, the same way you do with uh, CryptoPunks or Hashmas, you can look at the Properties tab, and then you can kind of start to dig through which rare properties they have. And in this particular instance, I have a young lady with 3D glasses, and 3D glasses are apparently quite rare. 0.58% have this trait. You also have things like earring, hair color, hairstyle, pants, pants color, shirt, shirt color, shoes, type, and all of those scores add up to give you an effective uh, rarity score. Now you'll notice I have priced my MiBit at 85 euros. There is a reason for that. Let's dig in. So if you wanna find out a little bit more about the rarity of your individual uh, me bits. There's a couple of places you can look. The first one is nftx.io, and they have a bunch of different tools for evaluating um, different collections of NFTs. I think punks are definitely on there, but uh, bored apes are probably on there as well. So you, you get some analytics and data. You know, for instance, the highest sales we have our friend here that went for 420 ETH, another one here for 400, 395. Those aliens. I've really been going for a lot. And you've got different types of creatures. So you've got aliens, you've got elephants, you've got skulls, you've got robots, but it's the visitors. And I suspect this is probably because the visitor punks, the alien punks, are the ones that have retained the most amount of value historically. So people are speculating that the visitors in MeBits will achieve the same kind of uh, status. Now, another tool that you can use is Rarity Tools. And here, you literally have a ranking of the MeBits. And what's fun about this page, this is the top 49 or so. When you look at this, there's only one alien on this page. Most of these are not aliens. And up here, you got some really weird looking ones. So this is the most valuable me bit there is. And its type is dissected. Uh, it has no shirt, it has no pants. There's just so many rarity components to this that, are, that make it valuable and weird. And its rarity score is 43,040.98. And whoever bet more is, you did good, son. You did good. But, you know, looking at this, there's a broad distribution of different faces and types. Um, it's it's not just aliens. And you'd think it was the aliens that, the, that were the most valuable, but in terms of rarity, no, not so much. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna plug in the number of my lovely 3D glasses girl to try and find out how rare she is. So I look her up and I discover her rarity rank is 2,490. So bear in mind that there are 20,000 um, me bits in total. So she's in like the top 12% or so. So not too bad, a rarity score of 335.81. And it's really those 3D glasses that are amping it up. Uh, there are also tattoos in some of these uh, me bits. And the tattoos are kind of weird because the artwork is derived from autoglyphs, which is another uh, Lava Labs project. But no one really knows what the value of a unique tattoo is. And I, I have another um, me bit that has a tattoo. It's a one of one tattoo. Let's have a look at him. So this is 15971. And there are his tattoos. And if I look in the properties tab, the tattoo motif is DFCS, DFCS. Naughty. And it's a one of one. All these other traits are really not that rare. So how valuable is he? Let's plug him in and have a look. Not very valuable is the answer. So his rarity rank is, is 15,619. So he's in the bottom 25%. Um, and his rarity score is 113.26. So those tattoos don't really count for much. Who knew? But maybe they will at some point. Maybe there'll be some additional functionality to these. Um, but who knows? So just one more thing we can do is I'm 
kind of curious about setting the price floor for various items. So what I can do is I can scroll through and see if I can find um, one of these with some 3D glasses. So here's a pig with 3D glasses on. And here it should tell me kind of a rough guide to what the price floor for the 3D glasses is. Now, a couple of days ago, that price floor was 85 ETH. Now it's 5.99 ETH. So um, the market for these Mebits is completely dropped out. Uh, and that just kind of tells you where people's perceptions are and how sometimes if you just wait, you get a better price on things. So even though the 3D glasses are rare, there's just not a big um, floor for those things. I suspect that where that puts us is, if we think about crypto punks arriving in 2017 or whenever it was, it took four years basically for them to really hit kind of a, a big top in terms of their value. And they may not have even topped out, I don't know. But you might have to sit on these Mebits for four to five years to really start to see some huge gains on these things. So something to think about. Now, if we go to the Mebits website, we can find a, a bunch more interesting information here. Uh, in, if we look at the owners tab, we can see the kind of list of bulk, the big holders. And the top holder has 289 of them. That's a serious commitment. And we can kind of look in and see what he has, or she, if it's a she, who knows. Uh, but in here, no aliens, no robots, no dissected. So it doesn't matter whether you have a ton of money or not. If you didn't luck out and get one of those rare ones, oh, look, there's a robot. Okay, there's one. Then, um, yeah, you, you know, I, I guess this is a speculated hoovering them up, you know, prepared to wear the, and uh, play the long game. Now, if you do have a big stack of these, like this character does, then you can sell them on OpenSea, but there's also a marketplace built into MeBits, which is where it gets very interesting. So if you click on the trade tab, you can basically set up a trade uh, offer, which could be a, like a bundle. So let's say you have 10 less rare ones and you want to trade them up for a more rare one. You could do. So there's a, there's a better um, market trading um, system here that allows you to bundle different types of um, offers together. And I find that kind of interesting. It's a bit more like trading Pokemon cards. You can you can set the offer that you want, and it's not just a simple straight, I want a, a Mebit for ETH or a, a Mebit for you know um, anything else. So it allows you to trade peer to peer in a, in a more kind of sophisticated way, which is kind of fun. So that marketplace might allow you to leverage having more of them to get one that you particularly wanted. Um, and it might well be that you just want one with 3D glasses. Just have to have it. Uh, I would understand why. And this trading terminal would allow you to do that. Um, there's a bunch of different ways of doing that. Let's have a quick look at one. So there's a there's a listings page, and I guess we can click through and have a look at the listing. Um, and there's a deal here. So there you go. Look, there's the, this is uh, offered by this and the maker is offering three ETH and this one Mebit and is looking to get this one. Let's see if we can find a more interesting one. There's some really interesting bundles going on here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here we have an interesting one. If we have a look at the deal, so the maker is offering 0.1 ETH and the taker is required to provide these four Mebits. So this guy is really being a chancer. He's really pushing his luck here, but that's what the trading platform allows you to do. And the question is, why are people buying these? So why on earth are people buying these Mebits? Well, obviously speculation plays a big part. If CryptoPunks equals X, then Mebits should equal Y. Now, I remember when we interviewed G Money for our big NFT film, he talked about his relationship with his punk being akin to finding a kind of peace with his digital identity. It was a skin he could wholly inhabit. Now, if punks express our two-dimensional selves, then Mebits should then express our three-dimensional selves, most likely in the metaverse. But which metaverse? Because there are many, and not all of them are crypto. Fortnite, for instance, is also a metaverse. Now, coming back to crypto, we have Decentraland, we have Cryptovoxels, we have Somnium. 
But if there's one virtual world which seems to really fit with MeBits, it has to be the Sandbox from Animoca Labs. Now, this is a voxel-styled persistent world in which you, the player, can create your own avatar, and here's what that looks like. So, this is the Sandbox, and it is is kind of a fun little world. You've got these crypto voxel, these voxel kind of characters. You've got, uh, you know, the, the full run of the place. There's all sorts of different assets that you can buy in the marketplace. It's a fully fleshed out kind of world in here. And there's a create tab where you can build games and you can check in and make an avatar. So it says, create your style, quickly combine different outfits, hairstyles and colors to get a unique look. So here you've got effectively a character that looks a lot like a MeeBit, but it's not a MeeBit, it's built in the Sandbox avatar builder, which is here. So I already opened this up, but yeah, basically I can make an elegant lady head. There she is, does she look elegant to you? I can spin around. I mean, what's the difference between this and a MeeBit? Shaved female head, is that what we want? Uh, we've got Yachtman torso, ooh yeah! But these are only the ones that are built in game. There is in fact another way to build an avatar, which is Vox Edit. So I downloaded Vox Edit and here it is. And this effectively allows us to become a modeler. So we can create a new asset in here um, yes, going to save that in there. And then <clears throat> I think from, yeah, it allows us to basically draw in 3D and create pixels in the space here. And that's all nice and well and good, but doesn't look great, does it? Let me see if I can open up uh, the asset folder. No, that's not what I need. So if you then click on templates, you can basically start from a pretty well fleshed out kind of figure. So let's start with, oh, I don't know. Let's start with a large human. And there is my large human. So this is a fun looking character. But I can go in and I can edit the different pieces of this human. So if I click on the head or I could load in this head. I just want to edit it. It gives me this little kind of uh, 3D box and then I can start, I don't know, let's say I want to change the eye colors to red because why not? And I can do that. And I've actually built, ooh, some spoke, spooky pump out eyes. And then I could, you know, maybe I want to make the eyes really weird. So I do this and yes, and I want to get rid of that particular one there. And there you go. So I've made a, I've made a weird voxel head. Thing is, like you could spend hours and hours. Oh, I don't know. Maybe maybe I can cut out some other stuff here. Maybe I can get rid of that. Oh, red. Oh, oh. Uh, I've broken it. I've broken it. What does that do? Oh, weird. What if I made the eyes really big and like on stalks? Oh. Nice, 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 nice. I want to build stuff. Ooh, yeah, looking good. So is the sandbox going to be the place where MeBits find their home? Or are they going to be multiverse travelers going wherever they please and doing whatever they want? Possibly. And it's in the unknown of things that speculators hang their hats. The less we know, the bigger the pamp. Now there are, on the other hand, plenty of critical voices raced in opposition to MeBits. Now Jay Putty has a point here. Rightly or wrongly, lava lamps have created effectively a luxury brand. They knew the right price point and they sold the lot. And like any luxury brand, there are no shortage of knockoffs to choose from. You've got Picassos, Pixels, Party Memes. I mean, take your pick. Just take a quick look on OpenSea and you will find a bunch of MeBits going for below the final auction price of 2.42 ETH. Now, do these represent a bargain to you? And does it offend you that the three cheapest are women of color? In fact, 
An awful lot of the cheapest ones are ethnically diverse. So what does that say about crypto folk? They're young white males, possibly? Draw your own conclusions. But there is a counter argument to this only for Wales point of view. The higher price actually ended in a moderately fairer distribution since Wales could have accumulated orders of magnitude more of the beasts had they been cheaper. Pranksy owns a lot, yes, but it is only 1% or so, not 10% as he does with bored apes for instance. In my opinion, MeBits are the first of its kind, following HanRGB's lead with CryptoCubes and baking in the OBJ object asset for Metaverse cost compatibility. Um, but this is a 3D avatar, and so as punks have been the first of its kind, I perceive this as being a literal punks v2, with an additional entire dimension of integratable utility. Hash masks were in a way the first of its kind as well, in terms of its unique art dimension and deciphering cryptic messages, but what interests me the most is utility and usability. As with any project from an, an investment standpoint, there are risks and uncertainties with acquiring a sizable collection. And um, in essence, I'm placing my bets on Larva Labs future developments and them providing value. They have a track record of game development and pioneering NFTs with, with punks. And so I have faith in their, in their industry knowledge. It, It'll only take like one legit game or virtual world integration for people to experience me bits on the next level. And the possibilities of future integrations are kind of endless. So to, to be the first to create a desirable 3D avatar with parallels to punks, I, I see immense long-term value. I myself am completely unaffiliated to Larva Labs, um, but... In terms of MeBits, I have a large collection that includes every rarity of, of body trait type, um, except for dissected. So let's come back to what these things actually mean to people. Now it is telling how many have now adopted a CryptoPunk as their avatar across social media, and how many more now use their hash mask or bored ape in the same way. Sure, we can build a custom avatar and be truly unique, but it's clear for many they like being unique, sure, but within a tribe. And in the weirdest way, me bits remind me of this. Yeah, this. I know you're like, what? But bear with me here. I was living in London when the first iPod came to market. Now, pre-iPhone, this was basically a spinning hard drive with a headphone jack, but it was white, and so were the earphones. No other device at the time had white earphones, and when you saw someone Wearing them on the underground, you knew, here is someone with an iPod. Now it was rare and special and kind of weird and you felt like a brother, just for a small moment in time. And I know that sounds weird, but that is what crypto punks feel like to their owners. You are a part of a special club, one which is growing in fame and rarity as more people come into crypto. Now, personally, I feel we are probably some years away from a fully fleshed out metaversal experience for our avatars. Now it's not straightforward porting assets between verses or even setting them up in the first place, so maybe we need to wait for the infra to catch up before we can really see these things gain desirability. But owners, including me, do receive that extra digital asset that they can own and exploit as they see fit, the rigged 3D model of their MeBit. And I think what I'm gonna do with it is probably take this asset and build it out into a custom collection of child NFTs. Basically, create a tribe within a tribe. Tribe, super massive. Then I could set my own different price floor, give others exposure to what is essentially a bona fide MeBit experience without it biting so hard into their wallets. But that is not possible yet. So, MeBits are probably ahead of their time. And in so many ways, so are punks. With the Christie sale coming up soon, even more people will be exposed to them and nobody will be able to buy them. So where will they look next? MeBits? I suspect that's what most people who bought them are banking on. Now look, I normally don't ape into NFTs, but in this case, I did. And I've been trying to figure out why that was. 
and I think it's this. I've spoken to a lot of punk owners now, and they talk of the relationship they have formed with that peculiar pixelated character. It's taken them on a journey. Now, I don't know what kind of journey we can expect for MeBits, but as someone who lives and breathes the value of storytelling and the timeline of experience, this was just a moment I didn't want to let pass me by. And I was prepared to pay for the privilege, but I can understand if you weren't. From Lava Lab's point of view though, a cool $80 million isn't exactly a bad payday. So maybe I'm just in the wrong game. Taking a long, hard look in the mirror, this was The Defiant. Mm -hmm.